So two new banners just dropped yesterday, and the question on everybody's mind is, should I summon? Short answers, Clefair, yes, you should summon for her. And Atom, probably, but still it depends on your situation. So let's start off with Clefair. Why is Clefair a must summon? Let's start off with the passive, it's extremely broken. So her unique passive is whenever she heals or using it, uses a skill, basically whenever she uses a healing skill, she restores the HP of all allies within three tiles, not just one or two, but all. That already sounds busted, doesn't it? When she's at full HP, she heals even more. So it increases her magic attack, which is what healing scales off of. But do keep in mind that these are rank 9 uh, numbers. So when you pull one copy of her, she'll be at rank 3. And this number will be 8% extra M attack. And this ratio will be 0 0.4 of your M attack instead of 0 0.6. Now let's talk about her utility and what she brings to the team. So she, her main selling point is this extra turn mechanic. It's especially busted when combined with a unit like Charlotte because Charlotte has her own extra turn mechanic and giving Charlotte extra turns reduces her own extra turn mechanic which gives her even more extra turns if that makes sense. Yeah, And Charlotte is already like the best unit in the game and she's like a hard carry and this just makes her even more harder for carry. Especially with Vampire set, she just never dies, even against green bosses. It's ins absolutely insane. Now, uh, extra turn aside, extra turns aside, she has insane AoE healing output. And also gives the healing over time buff, which heals 20% of an ally's max HP every turn. She has an AoE physical defense buff as well. And she has extremely good options to remove debuffs from your allies. Her unique weapon just basically increases her healing output even further and lets any skill cleanse debuffs. As long as you've healed three times, every three times you heal, you cleanse a debuff off everyone you heal. It's pretty, pretty insane. Do keep in mind here the skills you see in these bottom three corners. She's not restricted to only these three skills. Every character has this trait or skill tree that you can unlock several skills in and there are passives, there are actives, and each of them has a cost, usually at two cost or one cost. Uh, so out of the three skills you equip, you can only have a maximum cost of five of these pips over here. So you can equip any three combination as long as they're five pips or lower. So she has several options to equip depending on the situation. But obviously you want this uh, extra turn skill, it's extremely broken. And as for Clefair's cons, uh, I've tried really hard thinking about any cons, but I really couldn't find a good reason, any reason why she would be bad. Like, I don't, I can't think of a single con, sorry. Now onto the maybe banner, Atom. Why do I say it's a maybe or depends? Because if you already own Siegheart, the Fire Warrior from the beginner SSR banner, then I think Atom should be a low priority summon for you. Also, as you already know, everybody gets the free Fire Assassin Clarice for just from playing and doing the missions. Uh, if you already find that Clarice is doing enough as a fi the so solo Fire DPS for you, then you really don't need to summon Atom either because he'll just be a replacement for the Fire DPS. And also, since we're getting Clarice's unique weapon as well for free at the end of the second week of the mercenary missions and you already like using her then there's not really any point in Atom for you. Okay now that we got all the conditions of why you shouldn't summon for Atom away so you don't have Sigheart and you don't like Clarice or she's just not doing enough damage for you then Atom is, don't get me wrong, a very strong fire DPS still and a lot tankier than other mages because of his uh, unique passive. So let's just get into his skills and pros and cons. So what his passive basically does is if his HP is above 50%, he gets increased magical attack from 10 to 20% based on his rank. And when he drops below 50%, he restores full HP, 100% of his HP, which in turn gives him his magical attack buff from the first sentence again. And he also gets a buff called Blessing of the Sun for two turns. And that buff gives him 10% in all stats except for HP. 
So again, it increases his defenses and his damage. And the Blessing of the Sun buff passive, it starts off as a 4 turn cooldown at base rank, but it goes all the way up to only a 2 turn cooldown at rank 9, which is pretty, pretty low cooldown and pretty strong. Makes him really hard to kill unless you one shot him. Now let's talk about Atom's pros. He has insane AoE damage output. Probably the best AoE damage deal in the game, I would say. Uh, his unique passive makes him incredibly durable for a mage and gives him lots of self-sustain on a two-tone cooldown, as we already explained. His unique weapon makes him wait for it. Even tankier makes him deal even more damage and also ch inverts debuffs on him into buffs. Now let's get on to his cons. So his passive is kind of useless if he gets one shot because he needs to survive below 50% for it to actually activate to heal him back to full health. I guess the his unique weapon kind of helps with this because it gives him a straight up 15% damage reduction from the start. And he doesn't have that much utility other than dealing lots of damage. So the only thing he can do is strip buffs and buff one ally's physical attack, which is kind of a weird buff out of place on a hero like Atom, who's an AoE damage dealer to summon. So in summary, for Clefair, yes, you should 100% summon for her. And for Atom, if you already have the Fire Warrior Sigheart, or if you're fine with the free Fire Assassin Clarice that you get, then he's not a priority, but otherwise, he's recommended to summon.